Hi. Hi, Arjo. Hi, Sri Aditya. Hi, Harish. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Hi, Ritvika. Hi, 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 Shreyas. Hi, sir. Sir, I have to call Godwin Emmanuel. If I'm not wrong. Sorry. Are you? Uh, is your name Godwin Emmanuel? No, no, I'm Sudarshan. Okay. Godwin will join very okay. shortly. Great. Let's wait for a few more minutes. Until yes, sir. Can you give me a minute? I'll just be back. Sure. Okay, great. Okay, let's let's see who's the youngest here today. If you think you are the youngest, please type out your name in the chat box. Hi, Gautam. Whoever is whoever feels that you are the youngest in this group, just type out your name, uh, age. Hi Shreya. Great. Hi Shreyas. Shreyas is 11. Rakshita is 13. Okay. I think 11 and 13 are still older kids. Okay. 11. Okay. 11, 13. Lot of 13 year olds. That's great. Okay. 13 again. Okay. Harish is 9. Ritvika is 9. Great. Ajib 10, yes. Oh, Shreya, you're 9 years old. Sweet. Great, great, great. Okay, so I guess... <laughs> okay. I guess 9 is the... Eng Sorry, 9 or what? Uh, Yeah, I think nine is the youngest here and 13 is the oldest, but still we have older kids, 18, 19, we have older kids as well, but still nine is the youngest and 13 is the oldest. That's sure, great. I have a few of my classmates here actually. Sure, nice race. That's great. Okay. Uh, just give me a minute. Hello, <laughs> Okay, that's great. So, for people who do not know who we are, what we do, things like that. Uh, I'll just give you a short brief about who I am, what we do, and things like that. I'll tell a little bit about my company. Uh, okay. So basically, my name is Sudarshan. Uh, so along with my friends, we run a company called Cambryonics. Okay. So who we are means we are genetic engineering graduates. So we all completed our genetic engineering uh, from Chennai. And then we were working as scientists and researchers across the world. So I was working in Germany for a couple of years. A few of my friends were working in France, Delhi and places like this. So we are here uh, being with kids. We always love to teach science and do research. So that's what we do from Cambryonics. So we teach kids research. We, we teach kids how to do research, how to uh, decode biology and things like that. So every week we have a Kahoot session where we learn about completely new topics. Okay. So this week again, we are going to, we are going to be learning about something completely core biology, something that you guys haven't heard before, but would have known. Okay. I won't reveal what, what are we going to learn about today? And today also, I think we have, uh, 
uh, a team with all of us. Okay, we have an international team from Netherlands. They are a group of researchers. Uh, they are going to be. We are going to be talking about their research, what they do. You can ask them questions about their research. Okay, I know you're all smart kids. Let's see. And if you're all ready, we can start the kahoot. Are you all ready? You can show me a small thumbs up or yes in the Enough. chat box so that we can start. Thanks. So I guess Thanks. you have to. Yes, sir. I guess you have to say the instruction once again so that someone new here. Right? Oh, okay, great. Okay, so for people uh, who do not know what is Kahoot and how we do it, uh, you should you should have a mobile phone in your hand. Okay, please have an, another mobile phone in your hand, and you have to type in your Google Chrome type www dot kahoot dot it. Okay, I have typed it out in the chat box. Sir, actually, I have a mobile app. Can I use that? Yeah, you can use it. Okay, so for the people who are so, new so here, I'll just be back. Give me a minute. I'm sorry. Sure, 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 sure. People who are new here, please take out your mobile phones, go to Google Chrome, and type kahoot.it. It will ask for a game pin. Let's wait until we get the game pin. Uh, I think even the older kids can play today. Sir, uh, what is the what is the uh, what is the website name? Kahoot.it. I've I spelled it out in the chat box. K A H O O T dot I T. The game pin. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll give you guys the game pin. Okay, great. I think even the greater kids, Prerna, Akshaya, if you guys are there, please do join. It's gonna be fun. Okay. Any guesses? What are we gonna learn today in Kahoot? Something. Yeah. Some type of research. Sorry. Some type of research. Okay, some type of research. Okay, Druin. What I, I mean, you're something you. Something related to forensics. Something related to forensics. We're going to learn okay. about biological futures. Biological future. Okay, it's a future of biology. It's not about forensics. Not about biomimicry, Druin. I think we have already learned a lot about biomimicry. Oh. Something about virus. Um, not about virus. This is about a branch of biology, okay, which is going to be the future of biology, where people are doing so Synthetic much. Synthetic biology. Who is that? Adit Ajay. Adit Ajay. That's great. We are going to be learning about synthetic biology today. Last I Kahoot actually, how... you talked about synthetic biology. Oh, okay. Last Kahoot, there was a question on synthetic biology. Yes. Oh, okay. Great, great, great. I completely forgot. Okay, great. Today we are going to be talking exclusively about synthetic biology. We also have a team who has who is working on synthetic biology to share their research with you guys and to tell about them. Uh, okay, synthetic biology is something completely new, even to biologists who are there in the field. It's a very interesting field of science, and let's learn more about synthetic biology. <laughs> through the way okay guys this is the game pin you all know what to do please type out the game pin it will ask for a nickname i mean you cannot type out the nickname it will give us go spin if you spin it it will generate a nickname for you and you guys can join in great we already started to get in more people that's great That's great, 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 great. Great. Every week I see this learning community just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I love that a lot about this. And thanks a lot. Every week you guys keep... You aren't able to see anything in the screen. What are we supposed to do, sir? Uh, just type out your uh, game pin and wait. We'll start the game. Yeah, it, yeah, if you type out the game pin and choose your nickname, you are in. Wait for me to give start so that we all can start. Uh, thanks a lot, Duruvan, for inviting all your friends. 
I think we have something for you guys at the end of this session that you can also personally invite all your friends to be a part of our learning community so that every week we learn something new and great. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. So guys, whoever is joining in you, I'll again brief, go, go to Google Chrome, type kahoot.it. Uh, thank you, Shreyas, for telling me. I hope my voice won't break. Uh, go to Google Chrome, type kahoot.it. You'll see a game pin here. Okay, please type out the game pin. It will ask for a nickname. Just type spin and go. It will create a nickname for you and you all can begin. We'll start the game quickly in another 10 seconds. Okay. Corona, what is that? That's great. Okay. If I think we all can start. We already have 45 people and whoever is yet to join, I think you all can start. I mean, you all can join at any point of time. If we can start, just give me a thumbs up or yes, so that I know that we can start the game. I know all of you are super excited for it. Okay. 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 Great. 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 Okay. I think it's a yes. Majorly yes from people. And I think we can start. Okay. I'm not going to be talk. I'm not going to be talking today much about synthetic biology. We are just going to learn. Okay. So again, I'm just remembering you guys that the quiz is not about who is getting it right or wrong, but to learn as a team together. Okay. Even though you do not know certain things, try to learn. It's not about getting it right or wrong. Okay. That's great. Okay. Here we have the first question for the day. Read the answers properly and try to answer. Sir, we are in Sagatina. Sorry? Okay, I think most of you guys got this right. Okay, so synthetic biology is basically redesigning an entire biological system or editing something all that's already existing. Okay, uh, so this is what differentiates synthetic biology from genetic engineering because in genetic engineering we edit, we edit genes, we tweak genes based on what we need. But in synthetic biology, you completely design a new organism. Sir, okay? what did you learn, sir? I learned genetic engineering. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I never got hands to work on synthetic biology. So that's why today we have a team who is doing synthetic biology to discuss with all of you at the end. Okay. So as I like, you can really, like you can literally imagine you design your own bacteria. You design a new organism. So that is what is called synthetic biology. You try to create something completely new. Like for example, say we have coronavirus now. And there was even a rumor that the coronavirus was uh, engineered in a lab in China. It is the Chinese people who made coronavirus. There was a huge rumor, right? Humor that. Uh, so that is what is synthetic biology. With synthetic biology, you can create life. Sir, we can play God. Yeah, that is what exactly synthetic biology is doing. Okay, great. Going to next. Rapid cheetah. Great lemming. Great answering, guys. I know you're all age 9, 10, 11, but still you guys are doing so much of great job. about who is getting it right or wrong. This is about learning. Okay. If even it would have, I mean, even if it was me, I would have also guessed that it was of yeast, but it is not yeast, but bacteria. So what bacteria did scientists initially created uh, was uh, they created a bacteria that can self replicate on its own, that can keep dividing or that can keep self replicating on its own. So that is what the first new bacteria, new organism scientists created. I think it, I think synthetic biology is a field that recently developed, like sometimes from 2008 or from 2005, only the field got established. So you can see how recent the technology is. 
synthetic biology is not something 50 years old or 60 years old it's something very recently developed recently seen by the people and that is why not many people know about it okay great answering okay again we have been seeing a lot about interdisciplinary science right so synthetic biology is also an interdisciplinary science okay i think it's obvious synthetic biology does not involve music but it involves biology chemistry mathematics physics bioinformatics biostatistics systems biology so it involves a variety of different fields i think that is when you can create a new organism just by knowing biology you cannot create a new organism you need to know mathematics you need to know chemistry you need to know physics laws of physics to create a new organism uh and one more request guys i know you guys will have a lot of questions regarding how to create a new organism how does this works and things like that keep all your questions to the end we have a fantastic group of people coming here to discuss with you guys about it okay okay i think i answered this for you guys but still nice great answering guys are so quick and for whoever is there in the kahoot but still haven't joined the game you can always find the game pin in the bottom of the screen go to google chrome type kahoot.it and you can always join whenever you want okay is there a difference between synthetic biology and genetic engineering as i told you before yes there is a huge difference as i told you before genetic engineering is basically uh read it's basically editing or what is already existing it's basically editing genes it is not redesigning genes so synthetic biology is where you completely redesign something on your own that is the huge difference between genetic engineering and synthetic biology i think the techniques that we use in both are almost the same but it is what you associate Okay, guys, this is a tricky question. This cannot be understood by everybody. But just try to learn. Okay, I'll explain you guys what actually bio bricks means. Okay, uh, I hope you all understand what do you what does it mean by bricks. Uh, I hope you all can understand that. Uh, so, like, how we need bricks to build a building. okay so similarly even in even say consider human body as a uh, consider me as me to be a building okay we all are we all are built by small small bricks called cells to construct our entire human being right so bio bricks are nothing but as it given they are basically dna sequence for example say uh, my eye color is black because of my dna i think we have already discussed so that particular dna sequence which codes for a specific thing or which determines a specific function is called bio brick okay so not just your dna or not just your gene it is a collective of things okay can you hear my voice now properly yes sir okay great so that is basically called yes, bio brick yes sir okay okay thanks a lot okay right that's basically called bio bricks and this is like advanced biology this is advanced science that's great okay uh, this is basically genetic engineering recombinant dna technology is genetic engineering so read the question and answer carefully okay uh i know most of you will think that joining of dna from different organisms inserting this is not that not joining different and inserting into an organism so basically re recombinant dna technology is simple cutting of dna and joining of dna it could be in anywhere okay 
and you cannot do it across multiple organisms you can just do it across in a single organism sir how do you cut dna uh, there are a lot of proteins okay which we use to cut the dna uh, for example say uh, you all might have heard that uh, we all know that bacteria is a germ correct yes okay uh, just a minute shreyas i think my voice is audible to all if it is breaking for you i think there's a problem with your internet connection sir actually uh, while cutting the dna it won't create problems to the living organism it will create problems that is that is why we do it okay that is why uh, i mean we cut and we join the dna because for a specific reason that we want to create a new organism or to create a new characteristics i think that is that is why we do that okay so is it something like a, hibernated yeah. it is not something hibernated Hi- okay like hybridizing problem. that's what she meant hybridizing uh, hybridizing does not involve genes okay hybridizing does not involve cutting of genes does not involve uh, joining of mm. genes okay i'll i'll explain you the process mm. i think you'll understand this mm. so basically we have two enzymes okay we have two proteins uh, the cutting protein is called a restriction enzyme and the joining protein is called a ligase okay basically ligation means joining so what we do, as i told you before there is something called bacteria so bacteria is a germ uh, and we have virus okay so there are so many virus that affects bacteria that kills bacteria okay these viruses are called bacteriophage enzymes again sir enzymes means basically proteins or chinna or compound kind of a thing okay it's like a small secretion like how we have saliva saliva is also an enzyme so similarly there are enzymes that get secreted in organisms okay so basically what happens is when a virus comes to attack bacteria okay so bacteria secretes this cutting enzyme okay so what happens is when bacteria secretes this cutting enzyme the virus dna gets chopped off so when virus dna gets chopped off the virus dies okay sir okay so so what we did so what scientist we did was we identified how bacteria are able to kill the viruses so we took those enzymes from bacteria and we use it for our purpose okay, okay. so how we use it for our purpose means uh, you all know how we all have insulin so for diabetes i think all of us take insulin right most of our parents grandparents take insulin how do you think we create insulin we have insulin genes in humans correct so is it possible to take so much of insulin from people and do it no right so what scientists do is we take insulin gene from humans and we put it in bacteria okay so we cut the insulin gene from humans and we paste it in the bacterial dna sequence so that the bacteria create insulin okay so that we can use this insulin for a much larger population because we can grow bacteria we cannot grow humans just like that mm. right mm. can this be done for corona patients uh i think people are doing recombinant dna technology to identify a way to kill the virus in corona patients that's what people have been doing that's how we can find out a vaccine okay next question I told you right recombinant dna means basically cutting and pasting to create something new so as i told you about before human insulin all the vaccines that we use are all made by humans using the technology called recombinant dna technology where we cut gene and we paste gene for our thing dolly is a cloned animal so we do not do cloning in recombinant dna technology okay so only if we change its gene i think you guys remember we discussed about designer babies where scientists design even the babies how it has to look like in things yes. that is recombinant dna technology so dolly is not by recombinant dna technology cloning is not recombinant dna technology okay great answering good going guys good going
okay i think this is a very debatable topic okay so whether genetically modified crops are useful or harmful to the environment i think this is a very debatable topic but to whatever we were we are having currently it is still considered to be harmful to the environment because of so many reasons major reason is because uh, it disrupts the eco balance it disrupts the balance in the nature because we try to artificially do something for example say uh uh for example say um basically we have crops so there are a lot of insects that comes to kill the crops okay so what we basically do is by genetically modifying the crop we we design the crop in such a manner that if any insect eats the crop the insect will die okay so this is basically genetically modification but naturally the insect has to eat the crop to survive so by just doing that one thing i think we are disrupting uh, so many different things uh, so i think that's the reason why it is considered to be harmful uh, but on a major scale it is still a debatable topic so we still do not know uh, whether it is uh, good or whether it is bad okay we won't die but still it's a debatable topic i think yeah we can have that debate in a complete different class i think guys you this one i think most of you would have actually read in your school yeah that's right okay uh i hope you all know uh, why we created golden rice so i think golden right rice is one of no i didn't even know there was something called golden rice oh okay okay so golden rice is... okay. yes, me too yeah, yeah i'll tell you i'll tell you okay so golden rice is basically a genetically engineered crop from india okay so what happened was uh, there is a group of people in india where those people started having eye problems those people cannot see because they had a lack in protein called beta carotene okay uh, beta carotene is basically found in crops that is that has rich soil that has a high nutrient soil beta carotene is found there uh, but in remote places like in hilly places the soil is not so rich and fertile so the crops grew there did not have beta carotene so what did scientists did was they art, they artificially uh, created plants they artificially created rice that will have beta carotene in them okay so that whatever nutrition that the kid or whatever nutrition that the people lost from the soil you get it from the plant itself okay this is one of the famous uh, biology project which happened in india i think uh, golden rice even today it is available i think people are still using it across the world i think you can always google it up to to learn and why it is called go golden rice is because after people genetically engineered the rice it was in a color of yellowish gold that's why people named it to be golden rice okay that's great okay i think the portion keeps changing great going guys okay bacillus thuringiensis is basically a bacteria okay the bacteria that is shown in this image aha great answering i think most of you guys got this right okay brilliant genius yes, all sir. of you okay so bacillus thuringiensis is again a bacteria that produces a toxic protein okay so this is happens in nature so what uh, scientists did was they identified that this bacteria produces some toxic protein and this proteins are uh, okay and this proteins are toxic to insects okay this is what is happening in nature so these proteins are toxic to insects so what did scientists do was they took out that toxic gene from the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis and they put it in plants okay so what happened was when plants grew the plants secreted this uh, toxic protein even in the plants and when whenever any insect tries to eat that plant the the insect gets affected by the toxic protein so you do not need 
so you do not need any insecticide or you do not need any chemicals to kill the insects but naturally by putting in toxic proteins inside the plant you can kill the insects okay so this is what uh, people do for genetically modified food we have bt cotton we have bt brinjal so i hope you would have heard about the word bt cotton so bt means bacillus thuringiensis in front of the word cotton uh, ya mukul the insect would die because it is a toxic guys read the question carefully okay this is very interesting okay so this is again something which all of us have to know okay so the group of cells performing the same function in our body is not identical okay i think most of us would think would think that it is identical but it is not identical because uh, even though they are a group of cells who does the same function again they are a group of cells okay so uh, even in our body even in the cellular system we have something called work delegation work organization not every cell does the same function even in a group of cells okay so if not every cell does the same function in a group of cell that means they are not identical okay so we do not have the same neurons across our brain we do not have the same kind of mesenchymal cells across our body so they are all still different from each I other i didn't read the question properly <laughs> see that's the thing okay that's great okay guys this is the last answer this is the last question for today so again read this carefully that's okay pranit but i hope you have learned a lot today okay again most of you guys got this right okay in a scientist language or uh, if you are up studying biology you should know that so whenever a new piece of plant is grown it's not called a new species it's not called a new variety it's called a clone okay so what so is the clone clone is basically like exact copy of it okay for example if i make an another copy of me that is called a clone basically clone is basically xerox copies okay uh, you see plants uh plants are all same i mean every plant is literally the same with each other you cannot differentiate right this is the mother plant this is the father plant this is the daughter and son plant you cannot differentiate a generation in the plants right if they are, if they are all being at the same height but you say in terms of in terms of dogs and pets i think you can tell this is the father dog this is the mother dog and things like that so in terms of plants since everything is identical to each other we call it to be a clone okay i think these are few things which you should know that's okay guys whoever came in whatever position great job okay okay i think you guys did a fantastic job today i hope i mean as i told you before it is not about whether you get it right or wrong but it is about you learn something new today and things sure. like that yeah, yeah. so sure. i actually uh, i've not learned any of this in school uh, in yeah. our school so okay, can guys, i, I exit can i can someone i is, exit i think someone is sharing your screen can you please stop sharing your screen okay great i think we have kahoot done so i hope uh, we are waiting for someone here to turn up to talk about synthetic biology so they are a group of scientists from netherlands who is working on synthetic biology okay i think let's invite uh, godwin can you disable screen sharing from others because i yeah i did i did i did and can, can you I please sit uh, if you are 
if you are i mean if you do not have time you can exit but we have a team from netherlands to talk here uh, godwin can you please uh, spotlight gabriela hey there can everybody hear me fine yes. please just say yes in the chat box yeah thanks great yes well it's super nice to see you all and uh, what a what a fun quiz that you guys just made super interesting questions and of course i can imagine that not everyone actually knows what synthetic biology is because it's a very new field. It's something that has only just started a couple of years back. And uh, well, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what, what synthetic biology really is and what you can do with it because it's super broad and it's super, you can do so many great things with it. And we also want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing with synthetic biology. So as you know, uh, we all have DNA. All cells in your body and all cells everywhere have DNA. And DNA is like a blueprint, right? And it codes for everything, all the functions that every cell needs. So you can imagine that if you change the blueprint or if you change like a cookbook, for example, then your recipe is completely different, right? So then you're kind of changing something so that a cell has a completely different function, something completely new. So, um, what, that's basically also genetic engineering. But another cool thing about synthetic biology is that you can make like little Lego blocks or building uh, bricks, like also it's been explained before. So you can also make your own completely um, newly designed cell or newly designed organism with these Lego blocks. That's how usually people explain synthetic biology to me. So that's also how I learned it. I hope that that's clear uh, to you that you can also just take little blocks of DNA that code for a certain functionality or for a certain product. And then you can also just put it in, another, in a new cell so that it's got a new function. Yeah, cool, thanks. Uh, nice to know that it's clear. Um, so a really, really big organization that works a lot with BioBricks is called iGEM. iGEM stands for um, Internationally Genetically Engineered Machine. And iGEM also organizes like a competition every year where a lot of teams like ours, uh, design something uh, with synthetic biology, and then actually do see who, uh, which team has the best idea and how they've performed it the best way. So uh, as you can imagine, synthetic biology is super broad and you can do a lot of things. I mean, for example, we just heard the, the example of golden rice, but can you guys also think of other examples that you can make with synthetic biology? I see the- Hybrid animals. super <laughs> And the, but what if we fail to proper balance of all subjects and put it there? What is your idea? Uh, Godwin, I, mean, Godwin, I think you're, on, you're, you're not on mute. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, so that we are not blind. Godwin. We know something, but we want to discuss with you. Uh, Godwin, I think you're not on mute. Yeah, yeah. You are not on mute. Was this a question? I couldn't hear it very well. Okay, okay, I mean, he was discussing about something. I think people oh. started to answer. Okay, cool. No, but I see that you guys are already coming up with really cool ideas as well, like mutant things, mutant animals. You can do a lot of it. And f uh, as of now, there's not really a limit that we can think of. But because we don't really understand everything about the cell yet, then we also don't know wh what are all the possibilities that we can do. Your imagination can run wild, um, but we really don't know exactly how far we can get with synthetic biology. So for example, a really big project that's running now is how to make a cell out of nothing. Um, immortality, for example, that's a really cool example and it's actually a really controversial thing to talk about, but it's also really cool uh, to make life out of nothing. That's also synthetic biology. And if you understand an organism well enough or a cell well enough, you can recreate it and make it from nothing. So that's super cool. So iGEM, what iGEM does is it wants to make as many bio bricks as possible. So you guys already heard about bio bricks during the quiz. So little DNA fragments encoding for certain functionalities or certain products. What iGEM wants to do is to get as many of those bio bricks as possible so that you can then play around like Lego. Uh, so it actually promotes also other iGEM teams to make bio bricks. And that's how also the, the element of competition makes it a lot of fun for all these teams. So, in around October, the competition will take place and there are uh, 300 teams competing in this. So you can imagine that there's a lot of variety and the things that you can tackle are endless. So I wanted to talk to you also a little bit about what we're doing with my team. Um, we are called FOCUS. 
which is a combination of two words. It's a combination of uh, bacteriophage and locusts. And I'm wondering, have you guys seen a lot of locusts around in Chennai or not that many? Not in no. Chennai, but in uh, North, India. North India. Yeah, exactly. In North India, there are many, many locust swarms and not only in India, but also uh, I'm sure you've heard that also in Eastern Africa. It's, a, it's this big coming thing that there are many, many uh, locust swarms that are attacking farmland because what locusts eat is actually what farmers grow. So it's a, it's a pretty big problem that has not only happened this year, but it's been on for forever. I mean, since thousands of years ago, there are already huge swarms that were attacking uh, a little bit of the crops that, that people were farming. So it's a really big problem. And you can imagine that these, these swarms have been gotten bigger and bigger and people don't know how to control it. And so far, um, uh, so far, a lot of um, people have tried to kill these locusts with pesticides, but pesticides are sometimes not super specific. So then they kill other animals and other insects. And you also don't want to do that because you don't want to just, you know, um, throw the whole natural environment in balance. You don't want to kill a certain species if, it, if it's not harmful, right? So you only want to sort of tackle the locusts. So what we're doing is uh, we want to engineer a bacteriophage. And I think that that also came up in the quiz. A bacteriophage is like a virus that only affects bacteria. Uh, so we're making a virus, let's say, we're, we're making it uh, super specific so that when a locust eats the virus, it will then um, infect bacteria in the stomach, in the gut. Because uh, I'm sure that you guys all know that we also have a lot of bacteria in our, in our system, in our, or in our, what's called, in our gut. So we're actually um, looking at a specific bacteria that is in the locust, and we want to infect uh, this bacteria with a virus that we're making with a bacteriophage and then the bacteria will make will uh, make little things little toxins that we've been encoding in that bacteriophage and this toxin then kills the uh, locust from inside so we're actually making a pesticide that only then targets the locust um, that's so far what we're doing and right now we're working in the, in the lab and researching how, how this can be done. So this is one of the many, many uses of synthetic biology. And I can imagine that you guys also have many questions. I think uh, we're warming up with a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, I can see it's super exciting. Okay, uh, thank you, some, some said it was cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think the first question is, uh, I think Adit has asked is one year enough to design this whole thing? Sorry, once again? Is one year enough oh. to design your bacteria? That's a page? very good question. And the answer is no. The answer is one year is not, not enough uh, for uh, this to design this whole thing. So we do remain a little bit, you know, on paper that we do the research and we try to do our best in the lab. But, you know, experiments sometimes don't work out in the lab. So sometimes we don't have enough time. So that's a, a pity and we hope that after the competition, maybe some other people want to pick up our idea and then try to work it out because it, it's a really cool idea that if it works out, if, if it actually makes sense, that it's a great solution for a really large um, problem. Okay, Ritrika has asked uh, your adventure that you had in your first experiment that you did. Uh, wow, an adventure. Well. You know, um, I have sad news because we haven't been able to have a lot of time in the lab yet because, you know, you're all experiencing also uh, all the things with coronavirus. We've also had to stay at home for a really long time. So we haven't been able to really perform that many experiments. But so far, we've been in the lab for, for two or three weeks. And uh, the, the craziest thing that we've had so far is that we were trying to make a gel and that it didn't really work out very well. And then we had gel all over uh, our table and we had to clean it up. But that's, that's about it. We haven't had super, <laughs> super intense encounters with the lab. That's great, Kabil. I think one more question which I saw before was, can we bring back an animal which was extinct? Can we bring back an animal which is extinct? Wow, that's a really interesting question. Honestly, I think, I think we could, but maybe not now. I don't think synthetic biology is so far enough that we can do that, but I think that we can because if we know the genetic material of, of an animal that has gone extinct, we could probably also 
you know, remake it. Once we know how to make cells from nothing and make them work perfectly, then I think we can, yeah. Okay, great. Maybe, maybe your future minds will be able to do this. <laughs> I think Sri Govind has asked a question which I do not understand. Can you explain about a homunculus? I was the one who asked that question. And that oh, okay. We have, uh, the, we have the Instagram here. one. That man uh, inserted homunculus into the egg and created some weird creature. Kind of. I'm not sure what homunculus is, so I don't know how to answer your question. Yeah. Um, I actually saw it in. Yeah, I read an article about Injected the his own sperm into a chicken egg and made a new And species. made a very weird creature. Actually, it wasn't a creature. It was just a mess up of all the DNAs. And it worked? That sounds crazy. Um, no, it didn't work. The video shows <laughs> that it worked, actually. No, really? it, didn't. it was just a mess yeah. of uh, all the DNAs together. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes you, you can't uh, recreate. Two species can't make a new baby together. Uh, because that's also how it works with biology in general, that only species uh, can, can have babies together, the same species. But, you know, maybe with synthetic biology, you can actually make a whole new species from the two, because that is also what synthetic biology is. It's combining two different species and making a whole new one together. But I think that that requires a lot more lab work and really, you know, taking, knowing exactly which DNA parts you're taking and combining those together, because then it's possible, that for sure. Okay. I think these guys are coming up with a lot of science fiction. Yeah, things. it's crazy. <laughs> That's a lot of science fiction. <laughs> yeah, I think the next question from Jayashree is very interesting. Which, uh, which question, sorry? Is it possible to design... A gene artificially, which is responsible for regeneration of our own body parts. Wow. Cross species genetics. I wouldn't know. This this probably could be done in the future. I mean, it's a, there's no stopping synthetic biology, I think. <laughs> um, but I, I, I personally wouldn't know. That's true. Okay. Right? <laughs> I think they have a lot of questions about COVID nineteen. I mean, I think yeah. we need we need to clear these people off. Say they're asking that is COVID-19 a genetically engineered virus? Okay. Uh, well, you know, uh, I've heard that too, that, uh, that China sort of engineered the virus to, to actually make COVID-19. Uh, you know, I, I don't know either. I, I can't say yes or no, but I think that it's, it's been a virus that uh, was um, in the animals, in bats mainly. And then the virus itself, you know, how sometimes um, over a long period of time, you have random mutations um, in, a, in, a, in DNA. So sometimes when you're replicating DNA, sometimes the, the cell makes little mistakes. And sometimes these little mistakes actually um, lead to really, really big steps in evolution and then start to infect other animals. So not bats, but also humans. So I think, I believe that, that it's not um, a genetically engineered virus that has been created, but that it's actually a result of evolution. That's great. Yeah. And I'm sure that also because COVID-19 has been uh, quite a recurring uh, topic of, I mean, of course, it's been the hot topic for a while now. Um, many IGEN teams are actually even also working with a few uh, parts of this virus um, and to, to try to engineer it and to try to find a cure to it. I don't, I personally don't know much about it, seeing as we've, we've, working with bacteriophages and with locusts, but not a lot with, uh, with uh, uh, COVID-19. Um, but synthetic biology does go to the extent that, that you can, you know, tackle viruses and things like that. That's great. Guys, hybrid animals, crocodile-headed rhino. Guys, I think <laughs> <laughs> that's all completely out of fiction, okay? <laughs> Yeah, it's super science fiction. But, you know, at the moment, synthetic the field of synthetic biology is still looking at single cells, you know, so little tiny cells that, that eventually then make up a whole body of an animal, for example. So first, we're looking at hybridizing bacteria. So making two bacteria or functionalities from two bacteria to put them together into one cell. Uh, but actually putting like animals together, that's that's 
for in the in in the future i think that when you once you know exactly how to do it very well with cells then you can start uh, playing that with animals but i think that that's also something very difficult you know uh to take and i'm not sure if uh, the government will be really happy with it either because you're playing around with life as well <laughs> Is it possible to make invisible organisms? Maybe. I mean, jellyfish are see-through. Some jellyfish. I think we even have... <laughs> yeah, it it really will questions. evaporate, right? The jellyfish, what you said, ma'am, will evaporate, right? Sorry, what do you mean? No, you said a jellyfish, right? Mm -hmm. It will actually evaporate, right? Well, um, I think evaporation is something completely different to the color of the cells. Um, because being see-through doesn't mean that you evaporate. So I don't think so, per se. That's true. That's true. I think, guys, as Gabriela rightly put, uh, I think in synthetic biology, we, we're still with the cells. We're still trying to figure out how can two bacteria work together, or how can we benefit, how can we get benefited from them? Because as we discussed again here, it's a very newly developed field in biology. So we still have to go so much of research. We still have to go through so much of uh, lab work and things to develop it into a much um, much bigger technology that can affect humans or that can affect animals. Okay, I think Adit has another question. Is the RNA vaccine people are talking related to synthetic biology? I don't think it is. Um, it is, it is uh, bioengineering for sure because you're using RNA, you're using a, uh, a biological tool for this, uh, but synthetic biology is more of combining that with the cell, you know, like making, improving a cell or changing a cell. So not only about one specific, one small part of the cell, which is RNA. I don't think that that's synthetic, that that's not synthetic biology. Okay, so Gabriel, I think I have a personal question. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, why do you love synthetic biology or what, what is something so interesting about synthetic biology that you started to work with that? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and uh, I think that synthetic biology is just so cool because it's first, it's, it's a very new thing. So people are still rediscovering things and seeing how it all still works, you know, and that you can make such new things with it, that you can um, also help out in so many fields because, I mean, you guys already heard that, for example, you can engineer rice to make beta carotene, but you can also make cheese uh, without using that much milk, for example, or there you produce your own insulin or things like that, that you can help so many fields with something uh, alive that you can change and manipulate that. That's, I find that really cool. That's great. Okay, guys, I think one thing I think we all should be very clear, bacteriophages cannot kill COVID virus. Okay, because bacteriophages can only infect a bacteria and you all know SARS-CoV-2 corona is a virus. Okay, so bacteriophage cannot be used to kill COVID-19 and how do they crossbreed in animals? So I think in animals, they either crossbreed through artificial insem insemination or by natural thing. So, I mean, you cannot cut the head of a cow and keep it in a rhino. That's not how people do it, a crossbreed, that's not how hybrid is done. It's basically done in lab by artificial insemination, which you all would have known as IVF. Okay, people try to uh, like fertilize an egg of something and a sperm of something in case they want to create a new animal. Okay, I think I've heard when I was in Germany, people did something with zebra fish. So they created, so they used a zebra fish egg and they used another fish's sperm, uh, Madaka sperm, and they created an embryoid, which has both the zebra fish gene and also the Madaka gene. Okay, can Ma we mix? Yeah. Uh, can I know the, to, uh, how many types of uh, these types of fusion of species are made by you or the company that you work in? We haven't uh, really made any yet, but that's because we're not making a fusion. Uh, we're actually taking the bacteriophage, so the virus, um, and we're actually adding a gene to it that we know uh, codes for a toxin. So we're not actually fusing two cells together. We're only, we're engineer. we're adding a function to the bacteriophage. That's true, that's 
rightly true okay that's great no, gabriela no. yeah who is this guys can you please tell andrew, your name and ask her so andrew, that she knows andrew andrew okay great that is a three or four years before they found a small skeleton in the desert right did they yeah yeah like uh, can you explain on it i mean what kind of skeleton can you explain what it is it, it, it was a human skeleton but like, it's really small it's too small to be a human oh well i would not i don't know if that's synthetic biology but i think that that's also a little bit of uh, how you can have genetic differences within a species as well so maybe this very very small human then was just very small that could also be right there's a lot of false news in there that too <laughs> yeah that too like Man. right side there are lots of youtube channels which talk talk about trash like infographics show and then right side all, all these things are like they for a few years they were doing good videos and after that they just made their own stories when they were publishing it yeah because people but want to be popular right so so you're you're very right you have to look at what what's right and what's actually just a, a fantasy that's right i think that's why, that's why we are talking with actual scientist so that to clear your own next two dna is to form a new species guys one by one mom can we mix two dna is to form a new species Can and two DNAs transform a new species? Is that the question? Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, so I think that that's a very um, not not only two DNAs. I mean, you have DNA codes for a lot of things, and a cell has to be able to do a lot of things to be able to to say it's alive. You know, it has to replicate. It has to be able to to make energy for the replication and things like that. So uh, you really have to look at the DNA that you're adding together. if if it can work together to actually make a, a cell alive so that it can be called like that um my name is shreya thank you ma guys tell your name and then ask uh, um, my name is shreya i heard that the, this covid 19 uh ma'am uh, i just have a doubt i have heard that dinosaurs have been uh and it dinosaurs uh, skeletons are found Guys, I think two of you are speaking. Can you please tell your name and talk so that we understand what you ask? Uh, ma'am, I'm Shreyas. Okay, hi, Shreyas. Yeah, uh, ma'am, I just have to. Uh, I just want to know. Uh, they have been saying that dinosaurs are going to come through in uh, about twenty uh, fifty or so because uh, dinosaurs. Uh, Uh, they have found the a uh, little bit of dna from the uh, from the dinosaur bones and all of that so it says that dinosaurs can be brought back to life along with a few more um, animals such as the uh, uh, such uh, a few more wolves and all of that uh, they found uh, some dna is that true i don't uh, think it <laughs> no no i think i i think i told them about what george church does in howard <laughs> sir can i just uh, put the point in there sure uh, actually the dog she is talking about is called dogor it's uh, actually found in netherlands actually i think or i think siberia i am confused okay. but the dogor has is uh, like it looks like the early ancestor of a domestic dog plus a wolf like nowadays you get these wolf and dog hybrids but something in between that Oh. they found like uh, in i am not sure of the place and it's called dogor because it looks like a dog or is it a dog dog or okay okay understood yeah that's cool but you know you you have a lot of organisms that have evolved so a uh, really long time ago used to look another a certain way and then eventually you know the dna starts changing but that's not because people have done that uh but that's because evolution has done that that sometimes you have changes in the dna so the organisms and the species start looking differently 
but you know with synthetic biology the cool thing is that you're actually doing it yourself you're changing the dna yourself so that you can add a functionality or make it or make it different uh according to what you want and i think also to answer the dinosaur question of uh, being able to you know bring back um extinct species i think that that uh, is something for for the future seeing as right now we're still looking still at, at just the cells and seeing how they work and how we can um, merge those with other things but you know if you have the DNA sample of something that's gone extinct then you can probably also uh, sort of like combine that to existing cells to to get a combination of what's been extinct and what still uh, is alive which is really crazy Thank you. <laughs> yeah sure so I won't have a query. Excuse yeah. me. I'm Lakshita. Okay. Hi, Lakshita. Um, actually, Imam said that in a fascination of uh, that school, uh, making the genes or the DNA to join together. So she said, she, I'm joining the um, synthetic biology. I have a query that why, for what reason they hibernate uh, the, the synthetic biology is formed? For what reason it's given? The name and for what they are joining this to make a new species. Okay, why does it call synthetic yes. biology? You want no, to know that? Actually, why do we make this? For what reason does it benefit the environment? Okay, she's asking why do you use synthetic biology to create something? Yes, sir. That's a super cool question. Well, you see, um, we can uh, many times uh, we want to make. Um, let's take the golden rice example because you you already heard that also in the quiz, and many times you want to feed many people and. Uh, people need beta carotene, right? Carotene. So what we can do also with synthetic biology or with bioengineering is you actually add that so that you people start getting beta carotene through their rice because you know many people eat a lot of rice and then you can get a lot of nutrients in you. So um, mostly uh, synthetic biology, I feel that is also more to benefit us with new medicines or with new materials. You know, you can make biodegradable, biodegradable plastics or degrade plastics uh, through synthetic biology. So those kind of things is, is why it's so cool and wh why people have started uh, using synthetic biology. Um, I'm Gautam, I have one doubt. Sure. So can we produce God using synthetic biology? Can we play God uh, using synthetic biology? Or can we produce a God-like thing? I don't think we can. <laughs> I don't think we can because you know, to with synthetic biology, you always need DNA, the DNA information. And I think with anything uh, that we cannot put our hands on, you know, that we can't get a piece of DNA from, we cannot do anything with it. Yes, uh, I have a, doubt. a question. Uh, yeah, who is this? My name is Niranjan, and my question is. Creating a synthetic version of the coronavirus helps in the treatment. Is this true? I saw it in the internet. Uh, making if the, if the coronavirus has been synthetically made, is that your question? No, yes. he's asking that making a synthetic version of a coronavirus is it helpful in its treatment? I think that uh, it's dangerous because you'd be also making a, a virus, and what if it goes wrong and you start infecting people? But at the same time, I think that it's helpful because if you can make something, it means that you can understand it very well. And if you can understand it, then you can also tackle it. But because we're still at the phase, phase where we don't understand coronavirus 100%, then we cannot also cure it. But at the same time, that does also mean that we can't recreate the coronavirus. Um, I have a doubt. Uh, it's Adit. Uh, could you t name some breakthrough scientists in the synthetic biology field? Ooh. <laughs> I personally, I'm so sorry. I don't think I can. I haven't studied um, the people who have done this, but um, many times uh, people who have done a lot of breakthroughs in synthetic biology are actually also in the field of just genetic engineering because a lot of it is um, the biological tools that have been made, you know, in genetic engineering and synthetic biology are very alike. Um, so I, I'm afraid I can't tell you, but I can tell you that um, synthetic biology is, is very, very big also due to iGEM, the, comp the organization that or the uh, competition that we're uh, in, because they also want to make the biggest uh, pool of bio bricks. And that's the core of synthetic biology. So in essence, it's them. If I would Hello, ma'am. This is uh, Sri Govind. 
My question is, why, why can't we use SARS virus to create a new uh, medicine for coronavirus? Because both are from the same family right now. That's true. They're very related. And that's why people have also been looking at the SARS virus to, to see if they can understand the coronavirus a little better. But at the same time, there are differences. And these differences make then corona also different to SARS. Right? Is that understandable? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Got I have a doubt. Uh, I'm pregnant. Uh, is dissecting a part of uh, synthetic biology? Is dissecting a part of synthetic biology? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, dissecting is, uh, well, looking at the inside of, a, of an animal and looking at the organs and everything. But synthetic biology is much more really to, to a cell level. So one cell that you're engineering and that you're using to completely change it. And but in dissection, that, it's more of observation. But right? isn't that dissecting? Like looking inside an animal, like uh, an organism? I, f I think that that's a very, very good question. But um, many times dissecting is, is like a large scale animal. And many times a cell, you, you, you cannot even see it with your naked eye. You need um, to really work with its DNA for it to be synthetic biology. And not only look at it, because dissecting is more of an observation. You're looking at it, you're understanding it. But with synthetic biology, you're changing the DNA, so the blueprint of the cell. So it's a different approach. Ma'am, ma'am, Gautam again, I have another doubt. Is okay, cooking okay. food a part of synthetic biology? Is cooking food part of synthetic biology? No. No, it's not. Because once again, synthetic biology is changing the DNA. Uh, and to make, to have actually like a different function or a new function. And if you're cooking food, technically, yes, you're changing the DNA. Because for example, if DNA is exposed to a very high temperature, then you change the structure. But you're not adding any functionality or you're not adding anything new to the cell. So no, okay. cooking is not synthetic biology. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Okay, guys, I think that's the last question. I know there are so many questions to ask, but I think because <laughs> of the time constraint, we will stop it today. And I think <laughs> Gabriela will be with us to talk more about synthetic biology in the next coming weeks. And we'll talk yes. more. We have a lot of cool activities for you guys. We have a lot of cool games and things like that. Uh, Gabriela, do you want to address anything to end as a ending thing? Well, I just want to thank you once again for, for letting me talk to you guys. And I think that it's a lot of fun and you guys are super creative. And uh, we'll, we're, we're going to be working a lot in the lab and trying to do a lot of research. So uh, if you guys are interested, you can always then see uh, how, how well we're doing. Yeah, I think as and, as and when she does research, I think, I think, I mean, if possible, you can even show them a tour of how your lab works or what actually people do inside the lab. Because I think these people, I mean, they should know how does a scientist actually works inside a lab. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that once again, we're, once we're back in the lab, that uh, I'll, I'll make a little video so that uh, you can see what we do. I find that a really cool idea. Yeah, I think that would be great. And thanks a lot, guys, for being so patient, for being so creative, for things like that. Okay, Arjun, can you please type out your question here so that I can put forth it to Gabriela. Okay, he needs to ask the last question desperately. <laughs> okay, guys, I think before that, as he told you at the end of this session, we have something interesting for all of you. Okay, uh, I think even today, some people got in all your friends to attend the session, right? Okay, so similarly, it will be, I mean, similarly after the session, Godwin will circulate a small form and a message to all of your WhatsApp. Okay, so you can, using that form, you can personally invite all your friends. Okay, you can invite many, I mean, there's no number to any number of friends that you invite uh, because um, you always believe that, I mean, we always believe that knowledge when shared has nothing to do but only grow. Okay, so the more amount of knowledge that we share with people, the more amount of uh, people with whom we discuss or whom we talk about, I think that's when our knowledge grows. I think that's what I even I have seen. Every week I come talk with you guys about biology. I learn something new with, I learn something new being with all of you. I think that's the most interesting part of it. I think that's the most uh, beautiful part of it. I think even Gabriela would agree to it. Even we learned as biologists, I think even we learned so many things from today, right? Definitely, yeah. That's true. So I think you guys can always invite your friends. And for people who's inviting a lot of people, I mean, 
who is able to share their knowledge with a lot of people i think we can give you a small memento or certificate kind of a thing as a thing for all of you and please do follow cambrionic life science if you guys are on instagram and even tu delft i think there i think you can type out your insta page or your yeah uh, page. i'll do that so let me follow. let me send it all sure <laughs> i think all of you will get a certif a certificate of appreciation for bringing in your friends for sharing it with your friends that's great and we have something interesting for all of you in the upcoming weeks okay so please do keep our uh, insta page uh, followed so that we have lot of interesting things for all of you to come up we are coming up with something called as conversations okay uh, where we talk about okay this is our instagram page we have something called as conversations where we are going to talk about so much of biology with scientists with actual scientists i think that's going to be cool and also we are going to have gabriela and her team with us for the next sessions and hope to have more fun with you guys when is the next competition for you uh, yeah. uh, is it subject to change or i just wanted to ask Okay, Gabriela, they want to know about your competition status and when and where it happens. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, it's uh, it's in the end of uh, October, so it's a uh, it's still a few months away. Um, but it's it was supposed to be in in Boston in America, but because of the coronavirus situation, uh, it's going to be online. But it's still going to be in October. So it's a it's a large competition where, where we uh, where we will all be presenting what we've been doing. How long have you been working in the field? Uh, in the field, in with the competition, we started uh, towards the end of February, uh, so for a few months now. And with synthetic biology in the field, I've been working on this for at least another year. And before that, uh, I studied biotechnology, so that was also already an introduction to synthetic biology. <laughs> Okay, guys, I think that's the end of session. I know people will be interested to ask a lot of questions, but we'll keep it to the next week, Wednesday. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Gabriela, for being with us today. I yes, of course. Of Thank you, sir. Guys, if you all can bid a goodbye to Gabriela, I think we all can leave. Bye, ma'am. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so Bye, much. Bye, ma'am. Bye. 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 Bye, ma'am. Bye, bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. I think you are going to exit. <laughs> I'll end the session. Yeah, 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 got it. Thanks a lot.